How many of you today can say, hear me when I call God? That you can be like David said, and he was singing this, hear me when I call, O oh God. That is a relationship. That is a close relationship. You may be in a war-torn area. You may be in a poverty-stricken area. You may be in an area where the economy has been devastated. You may be in a place where there is hunger, there is lack. But all of us in any of these kinds and types of situations, we need to experience safety. God is faithful. And He's faithful to those who serve Him. He is faithful to those who love Him. He is faithful. Praise God. Safety is an issue. People are talking about safety in all aspects of life, business, all around the world. People are concerned about safety. In Psalm chapter 4, there is an issue with safety. And from the Word of God, we find how that we can dwell and live in safety. I love what Scripture speaks to us about. He says, the psalmist did, hear me when I call. And then he said, the Lord will hear me when I call. And then he said, you have put gladness in my heart. This is what we're going to share with you today. Hi, my name is Pastor Phil Russell, sometimes known as Bishop Phil Russell. And we're bringing to you a program called Biblical Perspectives. It's a joy to be with you today. We're part of Global Awakening Fellowship, an institute, and it's always a pleasure to share the Word of God with you. These are exciting days in which we live, and we're thankful that we're part of what God is doing in these days in which we live. I'm not in a state of fear or anxiety. I'm at peace with God, and I pray that you are too, because from the Word of God, we draw our strength, our guidance. We also receive revelation so that we can do God's work in times like this. So today we're going to turn to the book of Psalms again, chapter 4, beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture, and it's concerning the safety of the faithful. Are you faithful? Are you a believer that is faithful day after day after day in your walk and relationship with God? Well, then if you are, then you need to understand that you are dwelling in safety, the safety of God. And the psalmist so beautifully shares with us about what he thinks, what he's experiencing in a time of challenge and trouble. And uh, he's, he's the chief musician and uh, he is worshiping the Lord with his stringed instruments. And he begins to play on the string instruments his, uh, his thoughts. And he begins to sing, play, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Now, picture for just a moment David playing on his harp or his stringed instruments, and he's thinking about God. He's in this tremendous relationship with God. And he simply says, 
Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. What a powerful thought. Hear me when I call. How many of you today can say, hear me when I call, God? That you can be like David said, and he was singing this, hear me when I call, O God. That is a relationship. That is a close relationship. And he's simply saying, hear me when I call. And why is he singing that? Why is he saying that? He said, you have relieved me in my distress. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Praise God. Here he is in some kind of distress. And uh, he's saying, Lord, hear my call that I'm calling with in my distress. And the Lord hears him in his call. And uh, he says, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Now, David is saying that because he knows it to be a fact that he's calling on the Lord and he's calling on in a time of distress and he knows that God is going to hear his prayer and his call. And he knows that mercy is extended to him. Now, let's think about that today with where you're at, with what you're facing, the, the need that you have for safety, not only for safety, but the feeling of, a, of safety, the assurance of safety. The, you may be in the midst of some of the most turmoil you've ever had or experiencing. You may be in a war-torn area. You may be in a poverty-stricken area. You may be in an area where the economy has been devastated. You may be in a place where there is hunger, there is lack. But all of us in any of these kinds and types of situations, we need to experience safety. Even in the most heightened state of need, we can experience the safety of God's presence, of God's power, of God's word, of God's anointing upon us. We may not have all the answers to the things that are around us, but we can experience the safety of God as David did. He said this, How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. So David sets the story here in the setting that he's in. And he said, oh, you sons of men. He's saying, all of you that are in the world, will you turn my glory to shame? He said, you men of the world are turning the glory of the Lord to shame. You're not living the way you are to be living. You're not conducting yourselves the way that you're to conduct yourself. And he said, are you loving worthlessness? Worthlessness. 
He said, are you loving that? And he finds himself in this place and he's not experiencing safety. There is something about this situation that is not safe. So David says, I know the Lord has set apart the godly, but the ungodly is not set apart. They're in that place of worthlessness. They're in that state of being away from God, not living according to the word of God. But the Lord will hear me when I call. Now, are you in that place where all around you there is seemingly a sense of worthlessness? People don't acknowledge God. People don't reverence God. People are running from God. People deny God. They hate God. Some may even, even say that God is not real. But here you are in the midst of it, and you know that God is real. You know that his word is true, and you know that in the place that you're in, that the world seemingly is falling apart, and there's a spirit, there's an anti-God spirit, there may be even a hatred of believers where you're at. Maybe you're in a group that the world around you hate you because you profess and are a follower of Jesus Christ. Oh, but God is with you. I know believers that live in places where it's not safe. But... The safety that we desire comes from God when we are faithful. So I want you to understand this today. Your faithfulness determines your safety. Your faithfulness determines your safety. God is faithful. And he's faithful to those who serve him. He is faithful to those who love him. He is faithful. Praise God. No matter what your circumstances may be. And the psalmist said, the Lord will hear me when I call him. When I call upon him. And then he adds this. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. When you find your place in that unsafe place, the psalmist reminds us to meditate within your heart. And he said, meditate within your heart while you're on your bed or when you lie down to go to sleep at night or when you are lying down to rest, he says, meditate and be still. That's one of the hardest things for we believers to do, is to be still. I, I find myself often always busy, always doing ministry work and what life expects us to do with family and and all of those kinds of things. But sometimes when we find ourselves in an unsafe place, it's hard to be still. We want to be moving. We want to be trying to fix it. We're wanting to try to do something that will, will, will alleviate the anxiety. But the psalmist said, lay upon your bed, meditate, and be still. He wants us to be still. He wants us to meditate. And that brings us to a safe place. Isn't the word of God wonderful 
when we begin to look into it, we begin to read it, we begin to meditate upon it, and then we begin to be still, we find the Lord alleviating the threat to our safety. And he is our safety. He becomes our safety constantly and continually. And this is why the psalmist says, there are many who say, <clears throat> who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. And I love this. He said, you have put gladness in my heart. You have put gladness in my heart. Did you know when we find ourselves in that place where there is no safety or we're threatened, we can come to that place that the psalmist was and he said, you have put gladness in my heart. Some of you today need to understand that God will put gladness in your heart. There's a song we used to sing. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Praise God. He puts gladness. He puts goodness in our heart. As believers, this is what we so desperately need. This gladness in our heart. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Are you thankful for that today? Are you thankful for the joy that you have? Are you thankful for the gladness that he's put into your heart? Praise the Lord. And he even gives an exclamation here that I think is so beautiful. After he says, you have put gladness in my heart, he defines the gladness that he has in his heart. He said, it's more than in the season that their grain and wine has increased. He said, this gladness that I have is more, it's so much more in the season of the harvest. It, when the grain has been gathered and they begin to gather the grain and the harvests are gathered and it's much more than they anticipated. It, the harvest has increased. And the psalmist said, your gladness is more than that to me. Oh my, think about that today. The Lord will give us gladness in the time when it seems that our safety is threatened. And he said, it's going to be so much more than the harvest that have been gathered in harvest time when it is more than they anticipated. You need to hear this today. The gladness of God is going to be more than anticipated in your life. The safety that he's going to give you and grant you is going to bring such peace to you because the peace of the Lord is such a tremendous benefit to each of us as we live out our lives in this day. And then the psalmist closed with this beautiful last sentence of Psalm 4. He says this, I will lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Our safety comes alone and only by God. We can't create it. We can't get it from something else. We have to understand this perspective of the psalmist here, David, when he said, I'm going to lay down in peace and I'm going to sleep. Praise God. The anxiety the anxiousness that you've been experiencing as a believer. Today, you're going to be able to experience peace. You're going to experience sleep. 
And you're going to acknowledge as the psalmist did, O oh Lord, you alone make me to dwell in safety. The safety of the faithful. As a faithful man and woman of God, you are going to dwell safely today. May the Lord bless you. May his face be upon you. And may you experience the blessing of God today in the realm of safety because you're going to dwell safely in the presence of God because he has come nigh to you through his word and through this message today. God bless you. You'll find him there ready to grant and give you guidance for your present circumstance. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that loves us unconditionally, that has called us to be his own, to be part of his church in these last days in which we live. God says, I hate a proud look. God doesn't appreciate pride. He hates it. But we're living in a generation of wickedness, boastfulness, and pridefulness. We become one with Christ and one with the church of the living God in these days. And we become people that cry out. And God hears us when we pray.